Okay, so let's cover some options for scatter plotting in Plotly. And it will do this just because scatter plots are such an obviously common thing you might want to do. So here's one thing you can change the color of the points. Color is as.factor cylinder. So in the MT cars data set, so let me come down here, head MT cars, and show you. So cylinder is, is um, where is it? Cylinder is right there. It's, uh, I think, table. MT cars star dollar sign cylinder. Let's see. Yeah, so four, six, and eight. Um, so it's, it's displaying the number of cylinders of the car. Obviously, it should have an impact on miles per gallon, which is our Y variable. So we might want to display that as another dimension. Uh, because it's, it's effectively categorical, right? It's just the three values. We could do it as color. Okay. Now, it's not by default a factor variable. It's numeric. So we're going to convert it to a factor variable by as.factor cylinder, okay? And now let's run it. And then you can just see now the colors represent cylinder. And up here there's a legend by default that says 8, 6, and 4. Okay, now let's try something that's continuous to display the color. So in this, in this case, if you look at displacement, so um, heading back down here, if you look at the empty cars data set, the displacement, is um, kind of a continuous variable, right? So if we run that, Plotly is smart enough to know that the color is a continuous variable, so it treats it as another dimension, a continuous dimension using a continuous color gradient, and then it displays, very nicely displays the key to the gradient here on the side, okay? So that's another way you can use color. Um, let's, um, Let's change the size of the points. I think when we look at this plot, the points to me are very small. And then as you saw maybe from the last lecture, when I outputted it to an HTML file, the, the points were almost invisible. So let's, um, let's change the size. Now, in this case, the, uh, the size we're gonna do is horsepower. Okay, so horsepower is a continuous variable. So the size will be every point is just gonna have a different horsepower. Okay, I'm sorry, every point is going to have a different size. Okay, so here the cylinder is the color, right, and horsepower is the size. So another interesting way, you know, that you run out of dimensions, of course, in a, in a 2D scatter plot, so you, you know, the only real dimensions you have are the, the um, you know, the two displayed dimensions, color, size of the points, and then the plotting point itself are the different kinds of dimensions you can display. So here it's nice that we're showing four dimensions, miles per gallon, weight, cylinders, and horsepower, um, all in the same plot. Okay, now, um, now next um, I would like to just briefly show a 3D scatter plot. Now, um, I'm going to run the code here and show you the plot and then we'll describe what it's doing. Okay, so that's another, of course, this is another way you can add a dimension to a scatter plot. So what it's doing here is it's using WebGL, which is the um, uh, a web-based translation of the OpenGL graphics library. Okay, and it's a way that you can have 3D interactive 3D graphics in, embedded in web pages. So again, this will all just display and be interactive like this when you output it as a web page as well. Okay, so um, here we have uh, three variables, temperature, pressure, and uh, D time. Okay, and uh, in, in this case, we, we created uh, like a, a very fictitious data set. So temperature was just 100 random normals, pressure was just 100 random normals, and D time was just the numbers from 1 to 100. So there's 100 data points. They have three different values, okay? And this just shows you plot underscore Lee, same command, okay? Now we just specify three variables, X, Y, and Z. So super easy. Type equals scatter 3D, okay? Mode equals markers. And this, the color equals temp, just like before, puts a color gradient 
on the points and then puts the actual key to the gradient on the side of the on the side of the plot okay so that's all it all that we had to do to get this nice interactive 3d scatter plot okay so your homework now this so we've we I, I feel like we've covered enough of scatter plots to get you started on scatter scatter plotting in plotly you can of course look uh, at the further options that you can try and play around with but so for homework what I'd like you to do is create a variety of different 2d scatter plots changing the plotting attributes you know plotting other dimensions using color plotting other dimensions using different plotting points and so on and then try to do the same thing for a 3d scatter plot and just again output it as a web page so you know how to look at it as a as a that so you know how to work with these things as web pages and if you want, publish them to RPUBs or something like that, so you can, you know, you have a hosting, a way to host it publicly. Okay, so try that out, and then next we'll just go over some different, some uh, even, I think, cooler applications of Plotly.